Hi, I suppose welcome to my channel. Um, this is a channel dedicated to my journey with IBD, uh, documenting specifically my journey with Crohn's disease and also hoping to provide some videos on advice, lessons learned, um, medications I've tried, supplements I've taken, uh, diets I've tried and little tips and tricks uh, for other people who are going through IBD uh, to hopefully learn from. What I found when I was diagnosed four years ago, especially given the sort of mysterious and unknown nature of the illness, um, is that I spent a lot of time online, on YouTube, on forums, trying to find out what other people who had the disease, um, trying to find out how they were dealing with it and the strategies that they employed to try and make their lives a bit more livable. So hopefully this channel will provide um, the resource that I kind of wish I had when I was first diagnosed. Uh, just because I know how sort of confusing and uh, frustrating this illness can be. I was thrown a bit of a curveball uh, on starting this channel. Two weeks ago, uh, I was admitted to hospital for what I thought was going to be a sort of routine short stay to try and bring a flare under control. Um, however, as you'll see, uh, I ended up staying in for quite a lot longer than planned and had fairly uh, extensive and, and life-changing surgery whilst I was in there. Whilst I was in the hospital, I decided it was best not to just sort of twiddle my thumbs and sit around doing nothing all day. So I did film um, most days uh, sort of what I was up to whilst I was in there. Um, and I sort of discussed um, what had been going on with the doctors and the discussions they'd been having and the medications they'd put me on to try and bring my flare under control. And then also sort of documented my surgery and little bits of the recovery from that. So I think what's most important is for me to show you the sort of short background um, to my stay in hospital um, and the three months leading up to my admission into hospital and sort of where I was coming from. And in a later video, I'll go into more detail on my sort of um, bigger background and my, um, my experiences since being diagnosed with the disease four years ago. Please excuse the amateur graphics and voiceover here, but essentially on June the 9th, I was admitted to hospital for surgery on a perianal abscess. I'll go into further detail on that in a future video. I was also prescribed steroids on an IV drip and then at 40 milligrams a day tapering down. And I was started on vedolizumab, which is the last biologic medication they start you on before surgery. I was then readmitted to hospital on 25th of July as the steroid dose had become too low to contain my flare and I was re-prescribed the steroids initially on the IV drip and then at the 40 milligram tapering down dose. Three weeks later, I was predictably readmitted again, and this is where you'll find me in the next video on the 17th of August, being admitted to hospital. The red dots indicate the vedolizumab infusions that I had in between my hospital visits, and the videos you're about to see start with the 17th of August when I admitted myself to hospital. I've just got a wee update. I'm just walking into hospital now. Um, I've been sort of flaring, I think, for uh, a wee while now, but especially really in the last week. I've been going to the toilet a lot, um, sort of four or five times throughout the night, which is keeping me up, and then a similar amount during the day. Um, and there's been a decent amount of blood and mucus and all that uh, lovely stuff. Um, so I think um, the doctors will hopefully just sort of either keep me in for a few days on the IV steroids um, or they might talk to me about changing my medication or, or anything like that and uh, to be honest the worst thing at the moment is the, the sort of stomach pain I'm going through. I don't normally get really bad stomach pain when I'm in the flare but it just really feels like sort of something's blocked or I don't know. Anyway we'll see what happens in there uh, and I'll keep you updated. So as you can maybe tell, um, I am in hospital. I got admitted. Um, they took my bloods yesterday and um, my CRP, which is the main sort of inflammatory blood marker, was um, pretty high. I think it was like 100, over 130 and it was around about 30 last time they discharged me. So I'm in for five days on uh, IV steroids and have been put on a polymeric diet, which is basically just um, fluids. So I get to drink this milkshake uh, and I get to have uh, some jelly for breakfast. Um, I'm feeling pretty good, to be honest. I'm actually not feeling 
too bad. Um, but the registrar that I spoke to yesterday was mentioning uh, surgery again. Um, and it looks like if this um, drug that I'm on at the moment, Vilizumab, doesn't kick in, then uh, surgery is uh, the biggest likelihood. Anyway, I'll keep you posted on what I get up to in here. Um, that's what I'm on at the moment on Vidalizumab. Um, I think I said yesterday that they were going to move it forward to this week. Uh, this is meant to be my fourth infusion um, at week 10, uh, which is normally when they say the drug sort of kicks in and works. Um, so having spoken to the doctors this morning, what the plan is, is to try and give this drug another week to kick in. Um, and... Uh, in the meantime, speak to some surgeons about uh, the possibility of having uh, a stoma um, if this drug doesn't work. Um, so that's where I kind of am right now, sort of a two-pronged approach. In the meantime, um, I think this is day three in hospital. I think I've got another three days um, in here and I'm feeling really good because I'm on the IV steroids. Um, I always respond really well to IV steroids. It's when I go on to the oral steroids and taper down that I generally start feeling a bit, a bit shit. Um, and the hardest thing at the moment is just being bored um, because I sort of packed in a bit of a rush to come in here. Um, I only bought one book, which I've finished. Uh, I've got another book to read, Shuggy Bane, um, which has been recommended to me by loads of people, so I'm excited to get cracked into that. Um, and annoyingly, I can't eat any food um, because I'm on this polymeric diet they've put me on in here, which basically is just milkshakes, clear soup, which tastes really crap, and some sort of jellies. So um, I've not really got anything to look forward to. So I'm checking in on day four, day three in hospital. Uh, yeah, day three in hospital. Um, nothing much has really happened today. Um, I had a meeting with the um, GI doctors this morning and uh, they said that they'd uh, taken time to look at some more of my uh, bloods or a different blood marker which uh, suggested to them that I was uh, or have been more ill with um, the Crohn's for a while now and that they definitely now believe the next appropriate step is surgery um, and I should be speaking to the surgical team in the next day or two whilst I'm an inpatient here. Um, so... That's all that's really happened. I guess I've just got to sort of digest that. I've been a lot doing a lot of um, Googling and uh, trying to find out different people's sort of uh, stories with their uh, surgery and their recovery and stuff like that. So I just need to sort of wrap my head around how that might change my life um, and what it's going to be like. Um, if that's the case, if it is the case, then surgery will be in the next... Uh, two months I think or two months from now um so yeah that's all so as you can probably tell I'm still in hospital it's Sunday evening now um and I've been in since Tuesday uh, I was meant to be getting discharged today but uh they took my blood test this morning and my CRP my C-reactive protein was elevated again so they want to keep me in overnight do the same tomorrow assess it and then hopefully I can leave tomorrow afternoon um which is irritating but yeah it's, it's it's fine the hardest thing at the moment to be honest is I'm really bored um I finished both books I was reading and I don't have anything else to do really um and I just want to be at home and get a good night's sleep in my bed because the hardest thing here is is uh the night time and the lack of sleep and there's other people on this ward who are having a way worse time of it than me and making a lot of noise and um it's just hard to rest um i'm still drinking these um this is all i consume in the day uh, i think i'm going to be on these until my surgery which looks like it will probably be in four or five weeks time so there's not any 
food to keep me entertained. Um, there's no books to keep me entertained. And there's no sport on TV. Uh, and But it could be a lot worse. Um, I'll keep you posted when I finally get discharged and I'll turn this into a week in the life or whatever it ends up being. So things have changed a bit since I last spoke to you. Um, clearly I'm still in hospital. Um, the doctors and the surgeons have decided to keep me in. I think this is now three days over what I was expecting to be in just because my bloods keep on showing rising levels of uh, CRP, which is the inflammation marker. Um, the idea now is that I'm gonna have surgery tomorrow morning um, at eight o'clock. It's meant to be a four to six hour surgery. Um, and what they'll be doing is removing my large intestine and giving me a stoma bag, which will be permanent for the rest of my life, um, which I will poo into. I suppose, um, and we'll have to empty and change uh, throughout the day or from day to day. Um, I'm a bit nervous about the surgery and I'm a little bit sort of apprehensive about life with the bag, to be honest at the moment, but I'm also really excited because I've just been ill for a long time. And if this gives me the chance to not feel ill, um, then it's definitely worth it in my eyes. and it allows me to get into everything that I loved doing before I got ill and seeing my friends as much as I used to and exercising and doing the things that I really appreciate in life and eating good food, then, um, then yeah, it's definitely working for me. Uh, I saw a stoma nurse earlier today and I'll sort of show you a few of the little things that she, she showed me. So this is essentially what the stoma is gonna look like bag sorry will then go over the stoma and I will waste into that so you've got your stoma your stoma bag the stoma will release the waste into the bag I will go empty the bag and change the bag periodically um, I will explain that all in further detail and in hopefully far better detail uh, in a later video when I know more about what I'm doing um, I'll keep me posted when I come out of surgery. Um, probably not for a while because I think I'm going to be on a fairly significant amount of drugs. It is the morning of surgery um, and I've just woken up and I've just been for what I think will be uh, the last shit that I ever do in a conventional way, which uh, I guess is out of your bottom. Um, and... I can't say I'm gonna miss it. Um, it's not been terribly pleasant experience the last couple of years. So um, yeah, I'm sort of glad to be done. Glad to be done with that, I guess. It is the morning after surgery. Um, it lasted, I think, five hours last night and finished at about nine o'clock. Um, I feel okay. On the whole, um, I have a pretty sore stomach and uh, I have um, a catheter coming out of my willy and a tube coming out of my bottom and tubes coming out of my arms and nose and stuff, but I'm on uh, a lot of drugs, which is sort of keeping me nice and numb. <laughs> um, I am meeting the doctors later, so I think they're hopefully going to sort of try and get me to walk a few steps. And I'll obviously let you know how that goes. And I've got uh, my mum and dad coming in to visit me later, which is I'm looking forward to. And hopefully I might actually be able to eat today. Um, so I'll let you know how all that goes, but I'm doing all right. Um, and there weren't any complications or anything with, with the surgery, so. So um, things are looking okay for now. <laughs> so I'm about 20 hours post-surgery now. Um, this morning was 
quite good because uh, I was on quite a lot of morphine and feeling pretty comfortable. Uh, this afternoon's been a bit less comfortable. My sort of incision area is quite painful and the actual stoma itself is um, also sort of struggling to get some food that I've had through, although I've only had a yogurt and uh, some custard. I did manage to get up and have a shower and sort of walk around the room, um, which was quite tough, made me feel quite sick. Um, and yeah, I'll, um, I'm about, my mum's about to come in and give me a sandwich, so I'll let you know how that goes. So um, today is my first day with the stoma. Um, I won't show it to you now. Uh, I'll show it to you uh, when I get back home and sort of get control of it, I think. Um, it's been a tough day. Um, my energy's been really low, obviously. I was on loads of drugs this morning and the pain sort of kicked in when they, when they wore off. Um, so hopefully I'll get a good night's sleep tonight uh, and I'll be able to uh, do a bit more tomorrow. Today I've just really managed to stand up and, and walk a few lengths of the corridor, which um, I've heard is not a bad effort. Um, so yeah, tomorrow or the day after that, I'll hopefully be sort of moving around a bit more freely. Um, and I'm not sure how much uh, I'm going to film of being in here now, uh, just because it's quite a lot of me getting used to things and it might be quite messy. Um, but when I'm out of here, I'll obviously, I'll, I'll show you changing the bag and, and all that sort of stuff and uh, hopefully show you me recovering. Um, so yeah, I'll keep you posted. So I've just managed to change my bag for the first time um, myself, which is pretty cool. Uh, um, it's more victories. Um, I'm happy to be able to do that. It gives me a bit of uh, freedom for now. I'm also off the painkillers that I was on. Um, and I'm now on to OxyContin, um, which is just a slightly more mild painkiller, as well as this sort of patch I've got under here somewhere, um, which is giving me some sort of relief, background relief. Um, feeling better than yesterday, still feel quite weak. I'm not sure if you can tell by my voice, um, but feel uh, a bit less, I think, sort of stressed out than yesterday, a bit less sort of shaken by the whole uh, surgery and the bag and stuff, the bag is, is weird and the stoma is weird. Um, it sort of moves around and makes weird noises and obviously goes at its own accord, um, which I'm getting used to. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'll explain this all in greater detail uh, when I uh, am out and feeling a bit more energetic and can put together some proper, proper, proper videos for you. Um, this is me up on Monday, the, I think it's 29th of August. Um, I've been in hospital now for two weeks today. Um, and I had my surgery, um, to give me a stoma last Wednesday. Um, I, I'm hoping to be discharged today. Um, I'm actually feeling all things considered pretty good. Um, I think I'm getting to terms with the stoma quite quickly um, and I'm sort of changing it twice a day at the moment on my own quite efficiently and emptying it pretty efficiently as well, uh, quite a lot more than that. Um, I'm walking around a little bit. I can sort of walk, it seems at the moment, for about five minutes before I get pretty knackered and painful um and i'm sort of yeah working quite efficiently on my own um but basically just just uh watching sport and uh crap on the ipad and um sleeping really is what i'm trying to do but on the topic of sleep that is very difficult in the ward I'm in at the moment. Um, I'm back on a public ward, having been on the high dependency ward for three nights, um, and it's just 
pandemonium. Uh, <laughs> my sort of bed neighbours are, bless them, in a pretty bad state. Um, they've, they're all sort of older, older gentlemen and they're all in for um, various sort of surgeries I think they've had. Um, but one of them is up throughout the night vomiting and um, and wetting himself. The other one I woke up to this morning, he'd emptied his own catheter all over the, the floor and sort of walked around in a daze, sort of covered in, you know, all sorts. And I caught the other one trying to have a wank last night. So it's pretty weird um and i feel like if i feel like they will probably hopefully discharge me today and it'll be good to get home and actually just you know get sleep um because i think that's right now that's probably the biggest thing for my recovery is is sleeping because i'm i'm living independently in here with the with the soma but i will um let you know if i get out today and when i get home i'll put this all together like I said in some sort of vlog style thing and I will um hopefully if I'm feeling good um start making some more videos about Crohn's in general and uh yeah I guess I guess now my recovery from this surgery and and life of the bag so anyway yeah like I said I'll keep you posted and um yeah see you when I'm out of here so if you're still watching then thank you very much and well done for making it this far I'm really sorry for the amateur video content here. Um, I'm new to this game and uh, there's loads of teething mistakes I'm sure I'm not even aware of that I've made. Um, but hopefully I'll iron those out over time. Uh, if you know anyone who's got IBD, that's Crohn's or colitis, then please do share this video with them. I know how much value I got from watching other people with the disease when I was first diagnosed. And if this can help just one person, uh, then it's worthwhile for me. So keep your eyes peeled and I'll put out some videos in the near future on everything to do with Crohn's, IBD and life with a stoma.